The Cannabis Show is for information only. You should always consult with a qualified and licensed physician or other medical care provider. It's The Cannabis Show. Today, Kate reads us the top headlines in cannabis. Basil introduces us to one of his buds, and we explore the strain Pink Kush. And Dr. Kimmins joins us to help answer your questions. All that and more, keep watching. With legalization, are we worried about supply meeting demand? Best guesses by smart people suggest that even just 10 of the largest cannabis producers in Canada will be able to churn out about 1.8 million kilograms of cannabis annually by 2020 or so. Government figures suggest that demand will be less than half of that. Other jurisdictions where cannabis is legal have encountered oversupply situations, which could be okay. For instance, in Oregon, Idaho, a glut of cannabis stockpiles stemming from overproduction has caused a 50% annual price drop since 2016. According to that report, two years after legalizing cannabis, 69% of it remained unconsumed in stockpiles. Now, once regulations include edibles, topicals, and other oil-based products, which are expected to begin a year or so after legalization starts, companies can divert their dried bud to the making of these products, many of which do require larger volumes of cannabis. And then there's exporting, which remains one of the most highly regulated and complex parts of the cannabis industry. And industry insiders say because of all of this cost of exporting, that that's not going to play too big a part in the supply demand chain of things. Although cannabis will be federally legal soon, some municipalities have opted to ban cannabis outright. Markham and Richmond Hill in Ontario, Richmond, the city of North Vancouver, Abbotsford and Whistler in BC have decided not to allow uh, dispensaries in their jurisdictions. Canadians who live in these areas uh, that don't have dispensaries will have to use a mail order system similar to how the medical system works right now. In other places such as Tofino and West Van, it seems the ban is temporary to allow municipalities to come up with their own regulations around cannabis sales. Let's take a quick pulse uh, at the states right now. Attorney General Jeff Sessions declared in 2016 that good people don't smoke cannabis. Actually, he used the word marijuana. More and more disagree all the time. Alcohol and cannabis consumption rank near the top of the list of practices Americans consider morally acceptable. At 65%, smoking cannabis is on par with widely accepted acts included including gambling, sex between an unmarried man and woman, gay or lesbian relations, stem cell research, and having a baby outside of marriage. Welcome to The Cannabis Show. I'm Chris. We've got Hart, Kate, and Basil. And Kate was just talking about with news tips there. Man, that's supply and demand. Wreck happens October 17th, then poof Christmas. Is there going to be enough? <laughs> well, Halloween, I think. Oh, yeah, Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good point. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're going we're gonna to see uh, a sufficient supply, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess it's anybody's guess what the, what the demand is. Yeah. It's going to be lined up, uh, to, you know, 50, 100 deep on Yeah, yeah it kind of depends 17th. on how many, uh, I guess, stores are open at that time, too. But there's always the mail system, and especially if you're a medical cannabis patient, there's a mail system to deal with. So you don't have to worry about that. But if we take any of uh, the cues from down south in the states, once Oregon legalized, oh, yeah. they they had 69% of their product or something is still in storage. Like it's there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. and, and then obviously we know there. what happens when you keep cannabis in storage for too long. Right? Yeah, you, know, right. you want a fresh product. Yeah. Um, you don't want to get that CBN to start to, t you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with Hart. The LPs have been uh, letting us know how much cannabis they stock and how much they hold for the last little while. So those existing can uh, LPs have been have been stockpiling cannabis for a little bit of time. Uh, I think there's going to be plenty. Something we don't touch on much either on this show, but the business side of it, what would it do for stocks? Like if, mm -hmm. you know, if there is demand, but if there's too much, I don't know. I just yeah. want to well, throw prices, that in there. Yeah, you know? prices in the States went down significantly. Yeah, yeah. might so get yeah, some strains true. on sale. What about Ontario? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of municipalities are saying, oh, you can't put your store in here yet. It's provincial. How does that work? Like, does the municipality have that much power, like, to say that you cannot? That was part of the deal federally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Well, yeah. And, and so, yeah, those communities have opted out altogether. 
like the ones in Ontario and, and even like West Vancouver and North Vancouver, some of them are going to just like figure things out. And once they figured it out, they're going to probably open up. But come uh, around. Yeah, but it's nice that they can exercise their options for when know, they're ready. What does that do? Yeah. By, by say, no, no, can I mean, really, I mean, we're talking about the black, black market. market. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just going to bolster things. Like, yeah. Great you're point. not doing yourself any favors. Right? No. To be honest. Then you're going to drive somewhere else. We're legalizing. We're yeah. That's like, pollution. That's not, you're going to drive somewhere else and that's yeah. pollution. They go to yeah. Quebec to get it or something yeah. over the provincial border. So what about too even much NIMBY going on. You know? Building it right outside the municipality lines. I guess you got all that too, yeah. but I guess it keeps going on. And, you know, that very interesting story about the moral grounds of right. cannabis. 65%. Yeah. Is that, uh, a, we, is that a political party, the moral party? <laughs> well, pretty much because if you break it down yeah. into parties, 81% of liberals in the states are for it, and that's yeah. pretty much the same as legalization. And something like 41% are against it, then the moderates are in the yeah. middle. So it, it balances yeah. out to 65%. It's a 65%. positive number, though, 65. Exactly. Yeah, it's a pretty so, high number. Yeah, it's a, and like we were talking about earlier, like with critical mass, it's kind of like once that hits, yeah. then just topple, yeah. topple, topple. topple. There, that yeah. tipping point is just going to start to snowball. Oh, it's exciting. Uh, coming up on the show, Dr. Mark Kimmins, the medical director with Suniva. He's going to be joining us for You Can Ask Us Anything. We're going to dive into Strain Explorer with Pink Kush from Canna Farms. And now we're going to check out one of Basil's buds. <laughs> This is Basil's Buds, where I talk about someone awesome who I definitely wish was my bud. One of my favorite parts of, the, of this developing cannabis industry is how so many people truly want to help others and lift up those around them. In my opinion, nobody does this better than Stephanie Ostrander. I've had the pleasure of speaking and spending a little time with Stephanie on multiple occasions, and she never ceases to amaze me with her genuinely selfless attitude. Stephanie has described herself as passionate about and dedicated to facilitating relationships, and that is definitely the impression that I've always gotten from her. Trust me on this one. If you ever get the opportunity to meet Stephanie, you will absolutely be wishing she was your butt. You know when you have a toothache, they say suck on a peppercorn as it can help alleviate the pain. Well, how's this for timing? I had a toothache last week and my order of pink kush from Canna Farms had come in. Are you confused? What does pepper and cannabis have in common? Is there pepper in the pink kush strain? No, there isn't pepper in the actual pink kush strain. However, peppercorns or pepper has a terpene karyophylline that is known to be analgesic, good for pain. Pink kush also has karyophylline, so instead of chewing on peppercorns, I vape pink kush for my annoying tooth. Canna Farms Pink Kush is definitely reasonably priced, and the bottles from this licensed producer come with a convenient way to understand terpenes as they are color-coded on the actual container, almost like reading a cereal box. In this case, it was mostly black line to show the abundance of karyophylline. Pink Kush is capable of doing so much for patients and can come across as calming, awakening, and that you don't necessarily need to sleep while using it, and can definitely be great for uplifting that mood. Also can be considered for anxiety and stress. Pink Kush by Canafarm. You can ask us anything on the Cannabis Show, and today's question is uh, from Anne, and we're going to get to your question in just a sec, but first I'm going to introduce the panel. My name is Chris, you know Basil, you know Kate, and do you know Dr. Mark Kimmins? He's been on the episode, on the uh, show before. Uh, Dr. Mark Kimmins, we're going to get you to answer this first, okay? Sure. So this question is from Anne, and she says, there's been a lot of discussion around whether or not Canada needs to maintain a medical stream for cannabis. I'm hearing a lot of people say that a medical cannabis system will not be needed after recreational is legalized in October. Do you think we're going to lose medical ca access? What happens to all of us who are medical patients? Well, thank you, Anne, for that excellent question. I think a lot of Canadians are sharing those same concerns. And I would like to reassure you, as a medical doctor, I would like to state my strong opinion that we will continue to have a medical stream and we will provide access to Canadian medical patients appropriately. Yeah, no, I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And we talk to these people every day who are, are telling us um, how much medical cannabis really does for them. And, and they're really scared that, it, that, that something like this could happen. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really think there's a number of reasons that the medical stream won't go away. Um, first and foremost, uh, patients are going to demand access to medical cannabis separate from recreational cannabis. Right. Uh, the largest growing demographic uh, in, in terms of patients demanding access to medical cannabis is the senior population. A lot of them are more conservative 
and prefer a traditional medical route and to expect these people to go into a recreational outlet to sort of wade through recreational products to try and find out what might help them for their medical conditions, I think not only is unrealistic, but it's not fair to those patients. So I think that patient demand will, will help guarantee the, the separate medical stream. And secondly, I think Health Canada agrees. Health Canada has recently announced the intention to keep uh, plant cannabinoids or phytocannabinoids uh, as prescription only medications with some limited e exceptions for recreational products. They're going to keep plant cannabinoids only available with the authorization of a doctor, which essentially guarantees continuation of the right. medical stream. Right. That's right. And to your first point, really, I think every province is different, but uh, Alberta is saying that the people who work in dispensaries are not able to give any therapeutic advice whatsoever. Yeah. So where do they so go? So if you have an ailment of any type, you're going to want to see somebody in the medical industry, definitely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And one more area I'd like to see it go to is like senior homes and stuff. You're seeing a lot on Twitter that's not being allowed in those homes. And, uh, you know, I think there needs to be a lot more education there as well. And maybe as we get more normal with medical cannabis and stuff and baby boomers start moving, maybe it will become you know, more mainstream in there as well. But it's, I think we got to point that out. Like it's yeah. a lot of senior homes are mm -hmm. working out. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mark Kamins, thank you uh, for coming on the show again. Oh, it's my wonderful pleasure. stuff. If you got a question for The Cannabis Show, hit us up. This is thecannabisshow at gmail.com.